Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Top 10 Songs. Today, we're going to take a look at our favorite 10 tracks from Meatloaf and in the co-captain's chair, Miss Lynn Versace. Hello, dear. How are you today? How am I this evening, sir? Yes, this evening, <laughs> although probably morning to some people, maybe afternoon. I don't know. But uh, yeah, this yeah, evening. I'm OK. I'm getting a little sleepy. So I decided to wear like my pajama top and take my makeup off because I want to be comfy. Okay. I'm in comfy mode right now. Lynn was like, are you sure I look okay? You sure I look okay? I'm like, you look fine, Lynn. You look fine. <laughs> like, I really don't care anyway. <laughs> it is what it is. Like, whatever. Uh, yep, yep, yep. These, these late night Zoom things. Sorry, and my dogs are probably barking. Like, you're going to hear them. I apologize. Okay, no problem. No problem. So today, and before we get started today, and we didn't plan this, uh, however, on the day that we're doing our top 10 songs of Meatloaf, we lost uh, Jim Steinman today at seven yeah. years old. Uh, they have not stated uh, what the cause of death was, but of course, for those of you who don't oh, know, sad. yeah, Jim Steinman is the guy who kind of helped make Meatloaf Meatloaf. Oh. He's the guy who wrote and arranged and composed those Bad Out of Hell albums, and he's the guy yeah. who made Meatloaf's music big and theatrical and bombastic, and uh, just a superb songwriter uh, and composer who worked with a lot of other different artists, but as well as had his own solo stuff. But it was with Meatloaf that he really rose to prominence and really made a name for himself. So, uh, Jim Steinman, oh. uh, we love you. We lost you here today at age 73. Um, and I know if you can go out and read stuff, uh, Meat has. has posted a couple things online about you know how much how important uh, Jim was to his music and his career and uh, yeah so he's uh, he's a part of this whole discussion obviously yeah a lot of sure. these songs we're going to talk about today were actually written or co-written by Jim's so, uh, so we'll and you know sure. what rest in peace rest in peace is right and I tell you I was reading up you know about him today and stuff and uh and actually it's Jim Steinman actually said I've never seen him eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich he said, but he's the closest thing to Elvis that I've ever seen. And I love Elvis. He said that about meatloaf. Wow. You know, and I'm like, wow, that's that's pretty heavy right there. But he he really thought and felt that, you know, had that soft spot for me, you know, and uh, he kind of, you know, he kind of sounds similar, believe it or not. Yeah. He yeah. very much sounds similar. But yeah, I mean, he, he really had a soft spot for meatloaf and um, we're going to miss him and his songwriting. For sure. Well, they were kind of a magical team on those few albums that they worked together. I mean, it's almost no kind question. of like an Elton John, Bernie Taupin type of thing. Yeah. Um, they, yeah, you know, for to sure. get together, you look at like Meatloaf's career and his discography, and his most successful albums were the ones that they worked on together. And when you go and you yeah. listen to all these albums, you know, the ones that he's not, where Jim is not involved in, are not that good they're okay but it's not like yeah the hell albums or you know a couple of the others that we'll mention here today so uh yeah, so yeah. but um you know and as far as meatloaf goes you know what do you call i've always like had a hard time describing what the music of meatloaf is it's, like, it's a hard rock is it pop is it you know it's hard to say it's like a mix of a bunch of different genres it's like operatic theatrical yeah. rocky it's a little bit of everything i mean he really is He's pretty amazing. Yeah. I know. I think feel like people either love him or hate him, or maybe they know a couple of songs. Like I told some people I was doing this today and they're like, Meatloaf, you're going to pick 10 songs that you like from Meatloaf. And I'm like, the hell's wrong with you? Like the whole Bad Out of Hell album is pretty badass, you know? Like, um, but yeah, I, I'm, I, I, he's just amazing. Like I said, it's operatic, it's rock, it's almost like a rock opera ish. It's just. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. So we're going to start off on our number 10s and uh, work our way to number one. And I'll have Lynn kick us off with her first choice at number 10. All right. Well, my number 10, it actually, it was on Jim Steinman's Bad for Good album in 1981. And that's Rock and Roll Dreams Come Through. And it's on the Bad Out of Hell 2 record. Um, you know, I mean, it just kind of starts off with that heartbeat or that pulse, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it was just, it's a really good record. It's, you know, it's just about the pain and about the struggles of life. And it's, a, it's again, this kind of gives you all the feels. When he wrote, Jim, it was, it, his music just really makes you feel something. And this definitely had to be on the list. It's definitely not my favorite, but it had to be on the list. There you go. It's definitely a good one. Definitely a good one. Yeah. 
Yeah. My number 10, I'm going to go to the uh, Welcome to the Neighborhood album uh, for Running for the Red Lights. That's the album right there. One of his hardest rockers. Uh, it's, it's a really cool anthemic song. I think th this, this guy, Meatloaf, has had so many good, memorable anthemic songs throughout his career. And this is a real good one, you know, from an album that uh, did okay here, but not like a big gangbuster Bad Out of Hell album, uh, which all of all three of those did really, really well. But uh, also notable for some really great guitar work from none other than Mr. Pat Thrall, who of course we know from Hughes Thrall and Pat Travers band. So uh, yeah, really cool nice. tune, really good rocker. Check it out. Um, really, really good song, Running for the Red Light. Nice. Nice. I'm down. I'm down. Cool. Um, so I had to write this down because I, I didn't realize it and I've heard it before. And then I kind of just had to rediscover it. So my number nine was going to be, I'm going to love, uh, love her for the both of us. That was, was going to be my number nine. And I like that song. Believe me when I tell you I do, but, and it's off dead ringer, right? 1981. But I had to, you're going to freak out when I tell you this, but he wrote the Celine Dion song, Jim Stein. Meatloaf covered it. It's all coming back to me now. Yep. And when I heard Meatloaf do it, I was like, holy shit, this, ha this has to make my list because it was just amazing. So I kind of, number nine would kind of be a tie, but I, but I had to put this song on there because I thought it was pretty amazing. I don't know if it's on any of his records. I really don't. But when I was looking through stuff this week and I, I just saw it and I was like, wow, that ha this has to be for me, um, you know, has to be, has to be on there. Yep. It's on Bad at Hell 3, actually. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. It, it's so now I don't feel so bad about picking it. It's not like a one-off song, but yeah, no, no, no. It, yeah. It, 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 yeah. I mean, that was a huge hit for Celine Dion and then, uh, then he went and did it and it was a big hit for him. Well, as well so. the funny thing is, not that it's funny, but he actually they actually went to court because meatloaf wanted to record that and then i guess he wouldn't let him he said it was really meant for a girl and they had this whole kind of like little battle i heard or i read not sure how true it is so don't anybody put me in the comments put me to health it's not true but just what i read um to my knowledge that they had a little thing about that song and him actually to as best as I can remember, Meatloaf and Jim Steinman had a couple of instances throughout their long and story career together yeah. where, they, where they had court battles about certain yeah. things. So this was not- Yeah, well, that a, was one of them, so. This relationship was not all peaches and cream and road, red roses throughout their entire uh, history together. Yeah. There was some bumps yeah. in the road, which I think they got past all of those, but- uh, For sure. Yeah, never easy, never easy. Uh, my number nine is uh, Dead Ringer for Love from the Dead Ringer album with Cher. Nice, nice cool duet with Cher. How about that video, right? When they're the bar and they each. I love that. Sides, right? Very, very cool. I think I love Ringer that. We'll be visiting that great. back later. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good song. And uh, I dig it. And Cher sounds great in it. It's a good rock, yeah. too. So I, I dig it. So that's, uh, that's my number nine. It is a good tune. Dead Ringer for Love. Love it. Um, so my number eight, <laughs> I know it's corny. But it, when I was a teenager, it was like, I don't know, I guess maybe one of my, my first crush used to, used to tell me it was our song or whatever. I know it sounds corny because I'm so far past that, but it's for crying out loud, you know, I love you. That song, aside from that whole thing, it really put talk about feels, right? It's like this love song. It's like he loves her so much and you can feel the pain and the love and the, it's just so deep. Oh, and I have to laugh. <laughs> Your faded Levi's bust burst in apart. Like, all right, you know. So it was, it was sung in a really nice way. But wait, I don't get it. What's bursting? What the Levi's burst? Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I don't think that when I was, you know, in my teens, like, I don't think I realized that. Obviously, and then I'm like, oh, I must have realized later on. Like, hey, that's not really appropriate. But they said it very melodically. If you. Yeah. <laughs> If you must, you know. There's a lot of stuff on that first Bad Out of Hell album that's like borderline not appropriate. Yeah. Really. Oh yeah, for sure. And we'll get to another part of another yeah. song later that I kind of when I was looking at it, I was like, huh, it's kind of, that's might be cancel culture today. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, for crying out loud, you know, I love you, number eight. It's a good song. It's really emotional. That's that's like that kind of the gutsy uh, super emotional. It gets right to your gut. I mean, yeah. honest to God, if somebody loves you like that, don't leave right because you're not finding that again you know yeah, yeah exactly 
All right, my number eight, I'm going to stick on the Dead Ringer album. Um, it's a pretty strong album, actually. It's funny how, uh, you know, after the big, the huge success of Bad Out of Hell, I mean, he took a while to put out the follow up, and this For album sure. is tanked here in the US. It's like, it's just one of those weird instances where you have this blockbuster debut, and then the follow up just like does no business here. I know there's other parts of like it did pretty well in the UK, but here it just did not do well at all, which is a shame because there's some really good tracks on here. Uh, you mentioned I'm going to love her for the both of us. I love that. That's a great um, tune. Yeah. Kind of yeah. reminds me very much of what you got on Bad Out of Hell, but with this little kind of Springsteen vibe. And I know I could see that. Roy Bitten plays on that album and arranges some of it from Springsteen's band. I so could see that album. for sure. But uh, yeah, I'm going to love her for the both of us. Uh, really, really strong song. Very catchy. Should have been a big hit for him, but didn't really work out. I agree. Should have been a bigger hit than it was. That's for sure. Yep, exactly. Uh, so my number seven, I feel like the live version of the song is the best, um, better than the studio version. And it's all revved up and no place to go. I love that song. I think it's a good tune. I definitely think that they have way more energy in that, uh, you know, in that live version. And this is what I was talking about when I said, <laughs> there's other parts that are kind of cancel culture because part of the song is like about taking the girl's virginity you know so when i again when i was looking through the stuff i was like oh oh hmm. like i wasn't really something about the, one of the verses were about the blood or something like that and it was a they said that's what that part was about and i was like well i guess i didn't really know that either as a teenager you know but and i think if most people in the in the country today probably realize that they probably would so that with all this craziness going on but yeah i mean i i think that is a really good song and it does kind of it's all revved up i mean it, it gets you moving you know it kind of gets you moving it's a heavy rocker on that album and I, it I'll is admit, it is good song you know i bought this when it first came out so this is 1977 so i was uh 11 years old oh you bought that then yeah, I bought, I got this when it first came out. And, nice. And uh, I, you know, in my naive self, 11-year-old self, I thought all revved up with no place to go had to do with the motorcycle on the front, all revved up, no place to go except for straightforward. And yeah, not quite what it what it means, right? But nice. we'll leave that to the imagination of everybody watching what, uh, that, <laughs> what that song is really about. So, uh, yeah. All right, my number seven. Well, let's stick on the, the Bad Out of Hell album. And... I'm including this song. I almost was not going to put it in my top 10 because for me, it's so played out, but it's uh. still a great song. And even though I don't really need to listen to it much anymore, uh, I've, I love this song for decades, right? Until I finally got sick of it. But of course, Paradise by the Dashboard Light, which is such a, I mean, it's like what, 12 minutes long, right? Something like that. I mean, and that was a hit single. That was a huge song. And like, yeah. Nobody cared how long it was. And you got to have the whole thing, right? You got to go through no. the whole story. Phil Rizzuto, no. all that nonsense. I mean, the whole Everything. thing. Everything, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and that song, too, is really sexual. I mean, really sexual. It's pretty heavy. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that would not be released as a single today at all. I'm going to think not. No. Yeah. No, I don't think it would. So. I don't think it would, for sure. No, and now I'm going to revisit that actually later on. Because okay, yeah, there you go. Uh, but you know, nine number six is "Dead Ringer for Love" off the self-titled album. It gets you moving and grooving. That's a good song, and like you said, that that album itself, it's underrated. I feel like you know, I think it, it could have been bigger. It should have been bigger. That this song should have been bigger. Yeah. Um, I I think a lot of people don't really appreciate me. I appreciate me. I'm sure you do. <laughs> Oh, I do. I do. I like him a lot. <laughs> All right. I always, seem, I always seem to find a way to make you blush. Usually it's off camera. But Usually, yeah. I, I had a feeling we were going to go here at some point during this, uh, this show, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yes. Dead Ringer is a very strong album. It's not no, much no. different than Bad Out of Hell. Not much different. Um, <laughs> Nor is this What's album. your number six? My number six is Bad Attitude, the title track from Ooh. the album of the same name. I mean, I don't know. Listen, this show that again. I love that. I love that. That's a great album cover, right? Yeah. Oh, look, my look, God. Look How back. hot is that? Look at the back. Killer. 
And this is a great sure. song. It's got, it's just catchy hard rock. And he does a duet with Roger Daltrey from The Who. I mean, how how is this not like huge? I'll never know. It's, it's I got don't know. All the attributes of all the stuff that-, that Maybe they remember. should re-release that, you know? I guess, but you know, this is 2021. Would, would anybody care at this point? I don't know. But it, it, if you haven't heard Bad Attitude, very strong album, uh, definitely check it out. I, forget what year this came out and I don't, know, I don't even remember but definitely a good one definitely a good one so that's my number six bad attitude nice all right so we're at the halfway through mark yep my number five bad out of hell self-titled 1977 i know it's almost 10 minutes long i get it but it's killer a lot of his songs were long but you didn't mind listening to them and guess what guess who plays on that it was a huge production todd rungren plays on it max weinberg right and uh, what's his name? Roy Britton from the East Street Band. I mean, and Max Weinberg also played on that late show. What was it? Was it the late night with David Letterman or was it uh, right? Max he, Weinberg seven or whatever? Yeah, he was in Springsteen's band, but he played on one of those late night shows uh, for a little yeah, bit. I yeah, I almost yeah. want to say it was David Letterman, I, I feel like, but um, great drummer. Great, great drummer. Love him. Great Love drummer. Max Weinberg. But yeah. that song, killer. Bad Out of Hell, number five. And R- Rundgren's guitar work on that. <laughs> Come on, album, but that song, man, yeah, amazing. he's ridiculous. That song was, yeah, forget it. Amazing, huge production. So, I'm gonna go with my number five. Uh, here's a song you know, we mentioned Jim Steinman before, so this was a song that was originally supposed to be on the follow up to Bad Out of Hell, which kind of didn't really happen. So, you know, they didn't do Dead Ringer for a year till like four or five years later, or was it more, yeah. something like that. And um, so Jim Steinman got kind of tired of waiting around. So he's like, I'm gonna put out a solo album. And he actually released this song on his album. And then Meatloaf and Jim revisited it for the Bad Out of Hell 3 album, Bad for Good. Really yeah. good, catchy song. I mean, uh, it's just, it's got, all the meat and Jim Steinman trademark sounds. And it's got Brian May from Queen playing guitar oh, in a guitar solo. Which I did not cool. even know that. And, and you I know like him as soon song. as you hear it, you know it's him. I mean, nobody sounds like Brian May. And it's just such wow. a really good, catchy, hard rocker. Bad for Good is my number five. Nice. Nice. That's a good one. So um, again, number four, I do anything for love, but I won't do that. 1993, Bad Out of Hell 2. I will do anything for love, but I won't do that. No, well, I might, but no. either way. I, I like it depends on what that I, is. It depends on what I don't know that what that is, is but yeah. you never know because you don't really you have to define what that might be. Yeah. It's kind of it touchy. It could be that. I don't know what that is, but I might not do that. I won't But either way, I, that's a really good tune. I love it. And a pretty and cool video. Right? That video. Oh, yeah. And Bad Out of Hell is just, it's what my favorite meatloaf record, obviously. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I mean, what is it about this guy releasing like 12 minute long songs and they get released as singles? Even even uh, even this song, which is my number four as well, even uh, I Do Anything for Love, but I won't do that, was trimmed down from like 12 minutes to what, like seven or eight or nine, still really long. And it still works really well. It's and it's a great video, and that's my number four. I, I dig it. It's a really good song. Yeah, Real catchy, catchy hit, really good. And let people try to do that today. You try to release an eight, ten minute song. No, everyone's like, "What next?" next. ADD. Sorry, after three minutes, that's it. Done. Yeah, are you kidding? Three minutes. My daughter's in the car. She's playing her rap music, which whatever. But you know, she listens to like a minute and a half of a song, and then she's it's next, next. And I go, "What?" I was just getting into that. I didn't even. Oh no, I'm I'm bored of it. Like, uh, I guess you couldn't listen to Meatloaf, you know, no, get it. No. but it worked. It really worked for him. He's, you know, one of the few people I think that could do that and, um, yep. and get away with it or could have done that and get away with it. I don't think you can get away with it today. And and the, the music, the arrangements on that song are really, really good. Love the, the piano. I mean, that's a, the piano was a big part of all of Meatloaf's, uh, you know, especially the saxophone. He had a lot of saxophone Sax, sometimes. Yeah. Big, Stringed instruments, big, big production. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's epic yeah. sounding music. It really is really epic sounding. Like yeah. the guy was, I know Jim Simon, him, like said, they collaborated a lot, but the things that were on meatloaf's mind, I think that the way he wanted to do things, it's, it's, I don't know if it's on an Elvis level, like Jim Simon said, he, you know, reminded him, he, he put him on that level. I don't know if it's on that level for me, but it's, it's pretty up there. Cause he's a really super talented guy. 
you know, it's funny because I actually worked for him twice at the Mid-Hudson Civic Center in, in Poughkeepsie. Once I was a runner uh, and the next time I did wardrobe and um, he was super, super strict. Uh, he was very nice both times, but when I did wardrobe, he was, um, listen, I'm not a freaking ironing expert. So when I steamed his clothes, if every little nook and cranny wasn't obscenely perfect, uh, he wasn't happy, let's just say. Wow, really? Yeah. Even though he's yeah. going to go on stage and sweat all over it and everything like that. That's this. what I'm saying. I'm like, are you effing kidding me? There's one crease under the arm. No one's going to see it, bro. Like, 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 that's what I kind of was like, really? Really? This one little thing under the ball area? Like, what? No one's looking there. Like, no one's. And it was always the places that, like, no one's going to see. But he knew it was there and he wouldn't have it. He was a perfectionist. So yeah. it kind of goes to show, like, you know, like when you when you dress for the part, you feel good. People always say, you know what? You feel like shit, get up, get dressed every day and look amazing. You'll feel amazing. And I think he really takes it to heart. You dress amazing and he feels great going out on stage. No one looks his best. And, and he kind of shows in his music and his arrangements, right? He's a perfectionist. It shows all the way around. Yeah. You must have. So you probably worked that last show he did at the Civic Center in Poughkeepsie. Uh, it was like the last two, that, that maybe years three. Ago. It was two or three. Yeah, I did work the last show for sure. The last one. So I was at that. And one. that was the last show actually I did. That was the, the night I was um that was the night I was doing a wardrobe. Okay. That was about, about 10 years ago, right? Something like that. Oh yeah, for sure it was 10 yeah. at least at least 10 years ago. He had a great band, but I remember like he looked like the shell of like what we remember him at as and his voice oh, yeah. was great. And he, you know, oh, he yeah, no, he didn't he look like him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like like, you know, my wife kept saying, Is is he okay? Because he's like, he's got the shakes. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. He's you know. And he his voice was like at times it was okay, and other times I was like, oof, but the band was amazing and they played yeah. everything you'd want to hear, right? So it was Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. As long as you can get through it, make the people happy that bought the ticket. Yeah, well, people were into it. I mean, they were up dancing in the aisles, and it was like, you know, it was, it was pretty. It's nostalgia. How could you not be into it? You yeah. go to a meet, I'd go to a meatloaf show now if he played one, and I'd probably be pretty excited whether he sang it or not. Because my thing is, and at this age, all you have to do is go like this with the microphone and let the crowd sing the song. True, true. Like Ozzy does. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. So my number three is two out of three ain't bad. Again, right. out of bad out of hell. I want you, I need you, but there ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. <laughs> now, yeah, don't, be <laughs> don't be sad. Don't be sad. two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> it's late at night. Can you tell I'm delirious? I'm tired. Late night karaoke with Lynn and Pete here yeah. on a Tuesday night, right? <laughs> I'm not a singer. Um, I played one on TV though, but yeah, two out of three ain't bad. My number three. There you go. Well, my number three, let me find the album is, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. Oh, it must have been while you were kissing me. me. Yeah. I, I just <laughs> love that song. I, I don't care who hates it. Uh, I really like that song a lot. That's like a really cool set. That that's, that's like a karaoke bar song. And yeah. I, I have sang yeah. a few meatloaf songs in my life in a karaoke bars. I will admit that right now. Well, so that, that song it. in and of itself has its total operatic delivery. You know, it's it's yeah. really good. Well, he, he sounds really it. potent on that song. Really good. I love the oh, yeah. and the arrangement is heavy and just you know driving and stuff. It's really good. And and the female vocals on that whole first album are really really well. Totally, yeah. totally. So that's my number three. I get it. Number two is your number whatever seven. I think paradise by the dashboard light yep yep I, I know listen think about think about this think about when you were younger and maybe not because you're a guy i'm a chick every time you went to a bar that song came on whether it's karaoke before karaoke anytime somebody put it on a jukebox the whole bar stopped and everybody sang the parts you know the guy sang their verse the girl sang their verse at every wedding at everything you went to as soon as that song came on everything stopped and it was like, I gotta know right now. Do you love me? You know, like Not everyone. Right there. Yeah. I, and yeah. I mean, it was just yeah. like, oh, everybody had to do it, you know? And you did. If you were with somebody, you had to get a little sexual. Not like that. But, you know, you had to get a little sex appeal going on when you were doing it. You had to kind of move your head. It was that kind of a song. So I don't care who says they don't like that song. I know maybe we, it's been done to death, but 
if it comes on, I'm still singing. It still puts me in a really good mood. So although it was your number, whatever, it's my number two. There you go. Well, my number two, uh, you mentioned also too, is uh, All Revved Up With No Place To Go from Bad Out of Hell. I love the song. Uh, and, and he's just singing up a storm on it. It's it's fast paced and rocking and I totally dig it. So um, down. Yeah. Number down. Well, my number one is your number three. You took the words right out of my mouth. It's a great song. Great song. <laughs> that That's my number one. That is my all time favorite meatloaf song because like you said, you can't you can't play that and not jump around and, and dance around and it's, it's killer fucking chorus. amazing killer chorus so memorable oh my god um, it's the so arrangement good. is such is just amazing you know the vocals and the it's so thing. good like yeah it's just uh that's it's like so that song is quintessential jim steinman composition yeah yeah for sure yeah for sure and i tell you like i said i i was listening to his record um this week Jim Simon's record. And he really, to me, he does sound like Meatloaf a little bit. You know, yeah. they sound very similar. And in his record, he was also theatrical and had that, you know, so it just goes to show and all what their collaborations kind of are the same. It's just wild. Yeah. Really wild. Yeah. I do have honorable mentions, but I'm dying to hear your number one. Uh, cool. Title track, Bad Out of Hell. Like a bat out of hell, I'll be gone when the morning comes. Dun, 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 dun. I bet you will. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm a big Todd Rundgren fan, and uh, yeah, I, yeah, that's the heaviest song on the album, and I like heavy stuff. And I just, I think Rundgren's guitar work, man, the soloing and the riffs are just like scorching on that. And meat sounds great, and uh, yeah, and I don't care that it's long. I think it's better long, and yeah, uh, I've always loved. How could when did Todd Rundgren ever sound bad? Never. <laughs> Not to my knowledge, yeah. I mean, yeah, was, never. As a genius, you know, but yeah, uh, totally. Yeah, that's my uh, that's my number one. You got some honorable mentions? I have a nice. couple. I do, but first of all, I have to say, <laughs> I didn't realize Meat Love's daughter is married to Scott Ian from Anthrax. I didn't know that either. Wow. Let's yes, little fun day. fact. Wow. Little fun Ooh. fact, and she's a singer, also. Interesting enough. Um, in fact, so didn't, didn't she sing with him on a couple tours? She might have. She oh, might have. I, I don't did, remember. Yeah. I'm sure she must have. Huh. I would. I would. I'm gonna guess. And it's so funny because I was watching this interview and Scott Ian was saying, "Man, when I had to go home to meet him, I was really freaking nervous. Like I'm, I'm taking this chick out and I gotta go meet him." And he said he was kind of not so nice to me, you know. And then I guess what happened was that you know that they were dating for a while, and I guess they went to. I guess that when the Sunset Strip was booming, they had like a almost like a metal night karaoke it was karaoke or some kind of metal night on the strip. And I think it was at the Viper room. And I think meatloaf kind of texted his daughter and Scott Ian or called them up and was like, Hey, listen, you told me to freaking come down that you guys are here every week, get your asses down here. So they went down there. I guess meatloaf got completely wasted. And Scott Ian was like, I'm taking your car keys. And he's like, what? Get the hell out of here. You're not taking my car keys. And Scott Ian, you know, as little as he was, he's like, I didn't give a shit. He was not driving. He said, and after that night, the guy loved me since that night. And there's, you know, 12 years later, they're still together. He's like, but I had to take his keys from him. I was not letting him drive. He goes, and I was scared to death, you know? Exactly. When I right. saw that. It was, it's funny. If you look it up, it's on, you know, they, they see the interview. Imagine I say, so what are you up to tonight, Scott? Well, I'm going to go meet the meat. I'm like, <laughs> you know, yeah. what? <laughs> not beat the meat. Not to be confused with that. He's going to meet the meat. <laughs> No, not to be confused with that. <laughs> no, but that is funny. I thought that was kind of cool. I'm like, well, he's like, yeah, now Meatloaf likes me because I took his keys when he was drunk. There you go. I think that's a pretty Someone's cool story. Someone's yeah, got somebody it. had to do it. Couldn't drive home. No drinking and driving for all you folks out there. No, no, not that. Don't do it. Nope. Um, so anyway, I had to write this down or else I would forget. So in 1994 at the All-Star Game, Meatloaf gave a stellar performance of the national anthem. I don't know if you know that, but killer performance. If you Google the freaking 1994 All-Star Game, killer performance. And let's not forget, he was in the freaking Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hello. That's right. That's right? right? One of the most killer freaking movies out there. I mean, how could you not? Who doesn't love the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Come on. The great, great freaking movie. I so always thought he was going to like 
turn to acting full time because he did he he was on TV. He did a couple movies, things. He was on TV. Times. Did some kind of yeah cop thing or something. Yeah, he popped up every now and then, and I was like, you know, because I mean, his his music career kind of had its ups and downs quite a bit. It's like you know, some of like yeah. the Out of Hell albums all son of, uh, sold a shitload, but like some of the other albums didn't do any business at all. So it's like you know, and he would go and do some acting, and I always wondered if he was going to give up the music thing and just go straight into acting, but he never really stuck with that either. Yeah, I think he just played around a little bit, you know, and that's yeah. fine. You got to think he's that's made so a lot of money in his career, right? You got to, God, you got to hope. I'm, I'm thinking, I'm thinking he made some money. I'm thinking he made a dollar or two. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So my last one is, and again, I don't know if you know this, there was a concert uh, and it was for Friends Together for Children of Bosnia. There was a concert, Luciano Pavarotti. Meatloaf goes on stage with Luciano Pavarotti, who is one of, is my favorite opera singer. Love opera, and I love Luciano Pavarotti. I know from a metal chick that sounds a little weird. True story. I love opera. Meatloaf sings with Pavarotti. Come back to Sorrento. Holy shit! To, to quote Butch Jones, "God damn!" <laughs> you know, I mean, come back to Sorrento, Luciano Pavarotti, Meatloaf. Do me a favor when you get off this freaking thing, Google it chills up and down your spine of course i cry when i freaking hear it because you know i used to listen to it with my dad um but it's unbelievable unbelievable you you hear meets performance and you're like the guy didn't really need to be a rock and roll singer he could have been a very very well world-renowned opera singer he had that range he really did yeah ridiculous when you see him sing and perform at this Pavarotti concert i'm telling you now you're gonna be blown away and so will all you users out there okay, if well, you choose to do it. I'm going to do that as soon as we get off this. Um, I think you should. And then just let me know what you think, because I thought it was fucking fantastic. OK, cool. I will check that out. Yeah, he's got he's got that range. I could totally see oh. it side by side with Pavarotti. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's almost like that Bugs Bunny episode, you know, when they're in that. Where it, I think they're trying to be like in Australia where that, they have that big dome, the big amphitheater, the outdoor thing. And where they have that guy singing opera and Bugs Bunny singing with him and he's got that the white tails on and he's doing this Going up in the back. <laughs> yeah I, every time he goes up I I just kind of pictured that <laughs> you know I'm about <laughs> and I don't know why everything goes back to Bugs Bunny for me I don't know we go, we go back to the stuff we loved as kids right I guess that's uh... as kids mm -hmm. I'm watching it now who the hell are you kidding <laughs> I'm like Bugs Bunny's on. I got. Go. Oh shucks! You're yeah. just a kidder. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm still watching it. I'm a dork. I, I do care. watch it from time to time as well. So I, yeah, I watched. I spent many, many an hour in my life watching Bugs Bunny. Yeah, Netflix all my friends are like, "Oh my god, have you seen the new Netflix show? Oh my god, do you have Hulu? You have to watch this series." I'm like, I'm watching Bugs Bunny. You know, <laughs> the important stuff. Like what? Tom and Jerry's on? Are you kidding me? <laughs> stop oh too funny too funny but anyway i think that was awesome for meatloaf so yeah check those things out and uh rest in peace jim steinman that's right that's right a couple honorable mentions for me uh rock and roll dreams come true from bad out of hell too as well i love that song peel out for from dead ringer uh and one song that almost made my top 10 i really dig it a lot uh it's a song called in the land of the pig the butcher is king off of bad out of hell three killer wow. killer heavy song uh, with a really great hook and Steve Vai on lead guitar. Holy shit, Steve Vai. Yes. My other boyfriend. Yeah. You've got a lot of them. Well, you know. Does Mike know about all these boyfriends? Mike knows about all these boyfriends you have, right? Well, yeah, he knows. Of okay. course. What do you think's taking me to all the concerts to see uh, them all? So. I'm sorry, sir. You could just sit right over there. My boyfriend's on stage. That's a patient guy for you right there. <laughs> like he's got an option. <laughs> True, true. So there you have it, everybody. Uh, our top 10 favorite songs from Meatloaf. Uh, and also today we do want to, uh, you know, give our respects to Jim Steinman and his family and uh, fans. And uh, Jim, you will Absolutely. be greatly missed. You've given us uh, a lot of great music over the years. And uh, may you rest in peace. I know you're up there writing some rest epic stuff peace. with uh, all the rock and roll gods that are with yeah. you. So um Put your favorite meatloaf songs in the comments below. If you're a fan, if you're not, hey, just watch and have fun with Lynn and myself and visit us on the web at www.seatranquility.org. 
we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course, we're here on YouTube. All the damn the time. time. That is right. So uh, stay tuned. You'll see more of Lynn and I this coming Monday night. Jeez, we just did it last night, but it'll be here once again before you know it. If you haven't checked out last night's episode, it was Lynn's birthday episode. And we also, uh, you know, talked about the best sounding albums we've ever done. And you yeah. sang. And yeah, you sang, sang to me. Yeah, we all sang terribly, but it was, but whatever. It was, it's a thought that counts, right? <laughs> it was totally the thought that counts. And I'm grateful for it. So good. Yeah, we that that was uh, that was my plot, that whole thing. And you, you can thank it. Rich Rich Catino was that was his total idea with the cupcake. As soon as I told him we were yeah, doing well, it, I'm gonna, gonna ask him make... for it. I want that damn cupcake. It looks good. Yeah. Well, if he already ate it, you can ask him to make you a batch of them. I'm sure he'd send He's it. He's gonna have to. He's good that way. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Uh we'll see you next time for Lynn Versace, IMP Pardo. Good night, everybody. Ciao.